everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to make this pop-up box card. I have made quite a few, but I don't think I've done one this size. And I've done one by keeping these pieces on, but I don't, again, don't think I've done it this size. Look, how cute. So I've got my favourite little llama, which I've coloured. Again, I'll show you all of that stuff in a moment. But these are lovely. If you've never made box cards before, I highly recommend that you do, because they are really fun to do, they look great and they obviously fold flat so they're easy to post but they're perfect for all those kind of stamp sets that you have, all those little kind of scenes because you can just create these fun little displays like this and I just, yeah, I adore this one. I've made a nice envelope for it as well and again I'll show you all of those papers but if I just bring it up a bit closer you can see you've got the cake, you've got this lovely bunting balloons, I've put some sprigs of just greenery just to kind of fill it out and like he's poking up from underneath it all. These flowers here and a little cactus and then Llama wish you a happy birthday which is from the same stamp set. So much fun and on the back you've got room there to write your message as well so yeah lots and lots of fun so let me show you how to make it. Okay so I used a variety of my Arteza Easy Blend markers. I have already done the one for today's card and I've stuck the hat and the little bow tie on him there as well. This is the stamp set, it's the Sweet Dixie and it's the party animal. I've used this in a few cards now. Again I'll link all of those in and I'll share the links to this in the description box below and I'll list the colours that I used. I have got that one there actually which was one of my, because my, that was it, my Jasmine Yellow. I've nearly run it out, I've used that so much but it was the same as my Touch Light the cream so yeah you can see that they're, they're pretty well the lids aren't particularly the same but the colours are but yeah I didn't need the blender so they're the colours I've used but I will list those if anybody's interested for the flowers I used the Bright Rosa flower border and it was these ones here and that was just to do these little ones here again I've already gone and done those you can see just how they look I love all the different layers to them so that's done I've fussy cut some cactus some cactuses, whatever, and then I've done what, so basically in the paper pack you get a long kind of 12 inch length of this bunting, but rather than fussy cut it all again, I've got this that would have been either side, like this, that's how it was on the 12 by 12 strip, so I've cut that centre piece out, but rather than waste these pieces, I'm going to attach them just in the middle there, and then I've got another one. So that's what I'm using there, that's all my green sprigs all done and then again you'll see I've got the cake and I done really simple colour, I literally just coloured it in, block colour, I didn't do any blending or nothing so really really simple easy colouring there and then for the greenery I just used this one here which was a creative or something uh, die set again I will find links for this one I'm using holographic card on that one I used gold you can just see the gold picking up and using this one which is the Dovecraft and then this is the paper pack. So it's the Paper Addicts Viva Forever. I used it on the record card that I made, but I'm using it on this one today. Really lovely, bright, happy, vibrant colours. So for the main card, you will want a piece, 11 and 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter. So it's the A4 default length. Now, if you do have a letter card, which would be 11 inches, you can still make this. I'll tell you the, the score line, so that will be in my blog, okay? So you can make this card, even if it is just the 11 inches. But basically, you want to score along the long side, okay? You're going to score it two and three quarters, five and a half, eight and a quarter, and 11. And then along the short side, you're going to score at four and a quarter. Okay, so that's all the scoring done there. And then for your mats and layers, I've got some acetate there just for some of the kind of pop-up pieces. But you will need, for the inside, which is these ones under here, okay, you'll want four pieces of pattern paper that are two and a half by four. And then this piece here is two and a quarter by three and three quarters and that's to write your message on so if you want to stamp something on that as well and then for the pieces that go on the outer ones so these ones here the ones that flop over each side you'll need four pieces in my case it's this mirrored card which is two and a half by three and three quarters four pieces and then these are the four decorative pieces to go on top which are two and a quarter 
by three and a half. Okay, I'll go through the pieces you need for the inside in a moment, and also you've got your little topper there. I love that card, absolutely adore it. So that's everything there. Yeah, I just need to cut the strips for the inside and we'll score those in a moment. Okay, so first of all, we just want to fold and burnish all of our score lines. Okay, so when you fold it in half, you will have one piece shorter than the other. The shorter piece is the flaps, and these are the piece we, pieces we want to cut. Okay, so if you've got the tab here on the left-hand side, it's these score lines all here that we're going to be cutting up. So I'm just going to grab my scissors, and you want to just very neatly cut right up each score line, okay, just to the first score line. Okay, and then this one here, you're going to cut all the way down again, same as the others, but that one you want to actually remove, like so. And then this tab, you just want to take a little wedge off of each corner. Okay, so now what's going to happen is this is going to come around like this, and this one you just want to fold that way. If you're worried your card's going to crack, pop it back in your scoreboard and just score on the opposite side. But that's going to go inside, like so, and then they are all going to fold down. So that will become where that kind of piece is there, where we stuck it. That will be the back of your box card. Okay, and you can see how it will fold flat, like this. Alright, okay, then we need these three pieces which will be our little tabs in here for us to stick all of these pieces on. So you want three pieces that are three and three quarters by half an inch and along the long side, the three and three quarters, you want to score at half an inch, okay, and three and a quarter. So you're just creating a half inch piece on each side. So again, half an inch and three and a quarter and the last one, half by three and a quarter. Okay, and then just fold all of the ends on those. Okay, so open it up, and you'll have this tab on your right-hand side. This second section here, if I fold them all down, okay, so you've got one, two, three, and four. The second one is where you want to start sticking, first of all. You want to add some glue onto the back, so I'm just going to bring in, make sure I've got one there, a little bit of glue on here, and you're going to stick this one about half an inch in from that score line and about a quarter of an inch down. Okay, so just stick that like that. Grab the next one, pop a little bit of again, glue, and you want to stick it a little bit further down again, but keeping it the same from the top, so about a quarter of an inch. You can see this one here, you see I've got a bit of a gap. Bring in my lamps. You can see there, got the gap where the next one folds. Okay, and then the last one, I'm going to stick it again. Don't worry if they're not exactly straight, it doesn't make any difference at all. You're not really going to see any of it. You can see now where I've stuck that last one. So there's that one, that one, and that one. Okay. Next what you want to do is you want to pop glue onto the other ends on all three. You want to do it all at the same time. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. Okay. And you're going to fold the card in half. And don't worry if they slightly touch because once it goes flat they will all spread out and they will lie exactly where they need to. The card will be nice and flat so you know you're going to get it in your envelope. Just make sure that's all stuck down before you lift it up. Okay, now when you bring it out, bear in mind we haven't stuck that back bit down yet, you will have that. So then all you need to do is run some glue along that tab, or double sided tape, it's entirely up to you. You should have that back bit open, you're just bringing that last one over. And just make sure that you get it all lined up. Again, fold the whole thing flat, and that way you know that it is and then bring it all together again and that's what you have. So you've got your three pieces to stick everything on and now it's ready to decorate. So what I'm going to do first of all is stick all the mats and layers down. So I'm going to get these ones here which are the ones to go underneath. So if you just lift all of it up and the one where you've got the hinge, or the hinge where you've just joined it together, that's the back of mine. So that's where I want that one to go. 
and it should sit nicely over there and then these will go here and those two on the other side so I'm just going to stick them down okay so that's that done now I'm going to fold these over and I'm just going to burnish all of those now what you might also want to do is if you feel that you've got anything see I've got a little bit there where it's kind of like just getting a little bit buckled but that's the score line so I'm going to just remove that completely so it's just again just tidying it up really I'm just taking a very very thin amount you can see how thin it is because it's just started to curl up but just so I can get right in there so it's nice and neat like so there we go so now they hang down because you, you fold it flat like that or some people do bring up the sides and fold it flat that way but I like to do it that way so now again that's the back I have all these pieces so I'm going to go and stick all my mirror down on all four sides and then all of those over the top Okay, so next I'm going to stick down everything that doesn't need acetate. So I've got my lovely llama here. So here's my focal point. So I'm just going to pop a very, very thin piece of glue there. And I'm sticking him on this first one here. So I just want enough of him poking up over the top. Make sure he's nice and centred. Okay, like so. Then I have my flowers. So I'm going to pop one of these... The reason I've just changed glue is because that one doesn't stay tacky and because this all folds flat on itself I don't want there to be anything tacky inside because it will just stick so that's why I've just swapped glues so that one so I put one flower there and then this one is going to go there I've got this message and that's just going to go on an angle right through the middle okay then I have just one of these little cactuses that I fussy cut so that one's going to go just about there I don't want it to take away cover him too much but I do want it to be there so it's quite cute there we go and then I've got all this kind of greenery here which I'm just going to build up around him so I just had three kind of going off to the left and three going off to the right so there we go and then I've got those two little ones here which I've stuck right on the very front piece so don't be afraid to stick stuff directly onto the card itself you don't have to add acetate at all I'm just doing it to create some height and I'll show you to make sure you're going to get it in your envelope but um, just do make sure you use a glue that dries completely dry you don't want to have anything like I said tacky so I'm going to build these ones up behind him Okay, so that's what I've just done. So I've just added the little green to the very front, the flower there, there, and the happy birthday, the little cactus there, and then I've just put all those sprigs around him. Okay, now I want to create some height behind, and you want to make sure that you're going to fit this in your envelope. So the, you don't want to go any higher. So when we fold this flat now, one way might go more than the other. Okay, so just have a look. I'm going to do it that way. I'm using my grid here, lay this down and it will be just under six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll have a little bit overhanging, so I've just popped it in the centre there, okay. I've got my score line running with, say this was like the halfway, the three inch mark. Then go up eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, so there is the top of my card. So whatever I add in now, I can't go any higher than that, so for example, my balloons, okay, they're going to be I mean, they're going to sit behind him. We'll do it when it's in its 3D form, but I'm just lying it down. So say the balloons are there and the cake is like this. And then this bunting here will go across like this. Okay, but it's all got to stay within this 8 inch by 6 inch area. You don't want to go over because when it's flat it needs to be like that to fit straight into the envelope. So I'm just going to attach this piece together. I'm 
Okay, that one's just drying, so I'm going to just cut a couple of strips of acetate. Though I tend to always do my acetate about half a half an inch in you know width, so I just kind of eyeball it. I'm going to cut two pieces, one for the balloons, one for the cake, and then another two for each end of my bunting. So I've got four strips. Okay, it doesn't have to be clear either. You can use cardstock. Just I tend to usually do that because I just like the look of it floating. So I just want to arrange my balloons. I'm going to do something like that. So I'm just going to just roughly kind of stagger them on top of each other like so. Okay, leave those ones to dry. And then with this one here, I can stick this down. So my strips are quite long for the minute, but I always end up cutting them back. And I'm just going to add some tape to the top of my acetate. Okay, I'm just going to stick that one behind there. Then I'm going to add some more tape on this one. And then just stick it behind the three of those. And then this bunting, I'm actually going to cut it down. I'm just going to cut another piece off because if I lie this down flat, one, two, three, four, five, six, and lay that down. Yeah, it just now fits one, two, three, four, five, six. It, sit, it sits within that area. And then I'm going to just add, because it's so lightweight, I'm not worried that I need to obviously put loads of tape on it, but I'm just going to attach a tiny little strip of tape, because I'm sticking it to acetate. If you're using just cardstock, then you can just use, you know, a wet glue will stick really well, but I'm going to just use this red tape. Okay, and then my other two pieces here, I can just stick it onto one. You want them to go in at an angle, so I'm going to just stick that one. In fact, no, I'm not going to do that one yet until I've stuck it all in. Because it's gone over the top here, I'm just going to trim that off on the same angle. So again, it's all nice and concealed. And then you, this one's going to go on the very back. I'm actually going to peel that off again and pop this in here. You can see roughly how high you want it to be. I'm just going to bring this one in just so I can keep it at the right angle. It's a little bit fiddly, but once you get it kind of set up. So that's that. Let's just trim that one off. Okay, so you can see what I've done there, the way I've stuck it. And then when I sit it in, I can see where I need to cut my, my acetate. So I reckon about there. There is a lot of kind of guesswork with this. I've made loads and I do recommend that you look through the playlist so you can actually really get an idea. I mean, I'd say doing the bunting, maybe something like this, if you've never made one before, I wouldn't do this straight away. Get to grips with them first and then do it. So now I'm just gonna add some of my tape to the bottom of this. And usually I would say, Start with the highest point first and then work forward, okay? And that way you know everything will always fit into your envelopes. There's nothing worse than doing it all, making it too tall and then you, yeah, you're having to buy like a huge envelope. So now, I'm just bring this in. It should just perfectly sit in there. Because I've had to join it in the middle, it doesn't sit as well as the other one. But now, can you see? How cute is that? Then I've got my cake, which is going to go, I can trim that right down, so I know. That's going to go on the second like one here, because there's nothing on it yet. So that one's going to go in like that. And then again, the balloons, I can cut right down. It's about three inches, and that's going to go both behind, like so. So again, I'm just going to add, you can see when you feed them in, you can see roughly, I use my finger, so I need to put my tape just there. So again, I can cut it off again. So I'll probably end up only actually using maybe two inches length of acetate. And you want to keep them 
below this height but above this height so again everything starts to stagger down or as long as you can see it you want everything to be within you know eye line really there we go and make sure everything that's sticky is only sticky within that half inch tab section don't have anything sticky past that like just floating here because as soon as you fold that flat it's going to stick to it and it won't pop open. So the back of all these, just run your finger afterwards when you finish and make sure you can't feel anything sticky because if you can, then yeah, it's just not going to work. So look, there it is. How fun is that? So now let me show you how to make your envelope. Okay, so when this card is flat, it measures six by eight. So on here, you've got six by eight card size. It tells you you need a piece of cardstock or card, sorry, sorry, paper even. That's 11 by 11. Now this is cardstock, but it still works. And you want to do your first score line at four and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so again, grab my stylus, glue off me there. So pop it in here, four and seven eighths of an inch. Punch and score. Don't worry that it doesn't go right off to the edge. Rotate it right the way around to the opposite side, four and seven eighths, and then pop in this one here. Slide it along until you meet with that there. And the score, and then the final last one. Just move it along again until that lines up with this corner. Punch and score. Okay, and then you just want to fold and burnish. All these score lines. Okay, and I'm just going to use some of my red tape again. And if you've got directional, then make sure it's up the right way. So this is going to be the bottom. So I'm going to run some tape along here. And then just take the backing off. And because again this card's got a bit of bulk, I'm just going to fold it flat, okay, and lie it actually in the envelope. So you'll see there it's got lots of room. So if you you can go higher again, because your envelopes always give you about a quarter of an inch more than the card size on both the width and the length. Sorry, the width, <laughs> the length and the height. So yeah, you, you can go a bit high if you want, but I always play safe. Then I bring in the sides and then bring up the bottom. And that way you're shaping your envelope around the card and it will obviously slide in and out really nicely okay and then on the top ones there I'm just going to use some more of my red tape if I can find the end just run a nice neat strip along both of those sides okay and I've got to do it I always do but if you then cut a piece of two by four white card and stick it in the middle on the front there then you've got somewhere to write who it's to because sometimes the pattern paper names can get lost in amongst it. But there is your envelope. So I've got that lovely envelope to match that one there. And then I have my polka dot one to match that one there. And they are just a joy to make. I absolutely love this style card because like I said, it's perfect for creating a scene and just adding lots of depth and things. And again, really special. I've made ones with the birthday number in the middle. I made a really lovely one for my friend's mum for her 70th, and it was huge. It was absolutely massive. I think as pictures of that, and again, I'll share, or I would have already shared the playlist for these pop-up box cards, full of inspiration. But um, yeah, there you have it, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this style again and this size. And if you have, as always, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.